Hey, Owen here, and today I'm going to be building Meng's World War II's Tiger Mark I kit. Studio Rockavan provided me with this kit for free, however they have not paid me or told me what to do or say. Before starting, I washed all the parts in warm soapy water with a splash of vinegar. The wheels all have little plastic washers inside, allowing them to rotate freely. I repeated the same process for both sets of wheels. The lower hull parts all snap together cleanly and easily. I found it easiest to push on the overlapping wheels all at once, like so. A pin vise was needed to widen a few of the holes to attach the smallest parts. Once these parts were pressed into place, I applied glue to the inside of the hull to hold them securely without creating a mess. The only part I had a problem with was pressing the upper and lower hull halves together. It was a bit stiff, but I managed it eventually. The fit of the gun mantlets to the hinged part was a bit loose and required some glue to hold it in place securely. There was a lot of well moulded, small detail on the turret, which I liked a lot. The two halves of the gun left a fairly prominent join seam, which needed sanding down. I used a nail file first, and then some 800 grit sandpaper to get a smooth finish. I began by painting all the parts Humbrol 94 brown yellow, thin to a ratio of roughly one part water to seven parts paint. This was followed by two coats of Humbrol 83 ochre, thinned to the same ratio. For more information, check out my video on how to brush paint scale models. There's a link in the description and in the cards. I decided to go with a cartoon style paint scheme, like that on the box art. To achieve this, I lightened the ochre colour and painted the upper and some side surfaces of the model. I made no attempt to blend the two colours as I wanted it to look brush painted. I thinned this paint to a ratio of roughly one part water to seven parts paint. The ochre colour was lightened further and applied to the upper surfaces and some edges of the model to create highlights. I thinned this paint again to a ratio of roughly one part water to seven parts paint. I thinned Humbrol 29 Dark Earth to a ratio of roughly one part water to seven parts paint and applied it to the underside and downward facing areas of the model as well as shadowed areas to accentuate the colour contrast on the tank. Tires were painted with a dark grey mixture and were held in place on a piece of cardboard with blue tack or plasti tack to make handling them easier. Details on the model were painted with a very fine brush. I applied watered down PVA glue to the areas where the decals would go as the semi-gloss finish it leaves prevents the decals from silvering. The decals were a good thickness and applied easily with microset decal solution. However, the black arms of the Balkan Kreuz cross were not perfectly central, which was a letdown. Decals were held in warm water for about 12 seconds and then slid off the sheet into place on the model. For more information, check out my video on how to apply decals. There's a link in the description and in the cards. 
After a coat of matte varnish to seal the decals, the tracks were attached, and with that, the model was complete. So overall, this is a really cool cartoonified tank kit. It was so fun to build because all of the parts just went together really easily because it was so well molded. The decals, unfortunately, had the cross which was misaligned. That kind of let it down a bit, but that was the only negative about the whole kit, which is good. I found painting it a really enjoyable challenge, trying to get that cartoonified look with the contrast between the colours, and I'm really pleased with how it came out. You may have noticed that I didn't paint the tracks, that's because they rotate and I thought that the paint would just come off them if I put it on. Um, and also, I kind of liked how they looked anyway, so I thought I might as well not bother. I'd recommend this kit to anyone because it's a fun little weekend project that you can do over a day, a couple of hours, and in the end you end up with a cool looking ornament that was really fun to build. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.